You know how many guys out here like me selling dope? You know how many kilos of dope coming to the United States? You know how many times it's handled and how many people get a cut off that money? Everyone is selling dope. From the government on down. You don't cut off the hand that feeds you. So in other words, if that's where I'm getting the dope from, should I tell and cut off my neck? I mean, yeah, you know, the 60s was very revolutionary in terms of thought and in terms of um, imagery. Black is beautiful. We love ourselves. And it's documented. It's not even a myth or anything that is a conspiracy theory that the community was flooded with drugs in order to stop this stuff. I mean, you know, Hoover and the FBI, and they, they made sure that the drugs were an influence in the community. And it certainly had its effects. Just how drugs affect your brain, they affected the community. It made everything out of focus everything fuzzy. The drugs almost had a renaissance when, when they did the same thing with crack. You know, it was heroin then, it was crack after that. But that's, you know, people who are poor and oppressed, they focus on survival. The drugs seem like an easy escape route. I'm 27 years old, and I can remember back 1966 when I first went to the United States Army. Now they have brothers overseas that don't even know about heroin. And they come overseas with the fact of being a good soldier, you know, doing for their country what they have no country, you know. And it goes over there and they get hooked. You know, I think they wanted it this way, you know, because so many brothers done died, it's a shame, you know. And they, they, and, and they be lying about the fact, they be lying, they be saying your son died in combat. He didn't die in combat, he died from an overdose. And as you can see in the papers, uh, everybody's involved, big, big people's involved. They can't break it open. We were aware of some of the collateral consequences of the war in Vietnam, including the fact that young men who fought there returned with uh, serious drug problems. Uh, and that was uh, the beginning of the period where massive drug problems in black communities and the government was involved uh, in some way, the CIA was involved with the distribution of, of drugs. Uh, drugs were responsible for the receding of militancy and you know, revolutionary impulses in black communities all over the country. I look out on the world and I see people who have lost the awareness of being committed to any kind of cause at all. There's no unity in the world. You couldn't rally 500 people to sincerely fight for the same common cause, no matter what that cause might be, unless it's dollars. The result of this is, of course, the chaos that we live in. I fight drug addiction in Harlem. I run the Addicts Rehabilitation Center. It's a tragedy that we live in a society that believes that it can do everything, that it can go to the moon, and yet it does not believe that it can cure a drug victim of a malady that the society has caused. That's a disgrace. The black people here in Harlem are more uh, intellectually independent than black people anywhere in America. Black people in Harlem can think for themselves, and black people in Harlem think black. Black people in New York, they think black, they walk black, they talk black, they're proud to be black. Well, Harlem is, is romanticized um, from, for the culture, and Harlem is different now that has been gentrified a few times over. So you have influences and money in Harlem that wasn't there, but you still have this. You know, rich, famous people living there, but right there on the corner, they're still selling crack, they're still selling, selling heroin, they're still these same traps. Harlem is the complete metaphor for the black experience in America. <laughs> 